happened? It is a new Dan Henry 1962 chronograph. Uh, this is the Panda version. And um, this is not the stock strap. It is a one that I got from Cheapest Needle Strap. It's perforated black leather with the uh, contrast white stitching. <clears throat> um, yeah, the Dan Henry came with a, a pair of straps, a, I guess, kind of tan colored smooth leather strap and one that was black. They're both nice, but um, <clears throat> because they're just smooth and uh, <clears throat> solid across, a little bit plain and conservative, so I, I have to spice it up with, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this um, rally strap here, perforated rally strap. I think it looks a little bit more sportier. More appropriate for this type of watch and uh, just spices it up a bit um, I had this for another watch which I'll probably show it on later it's just my Seiko SED no, SEB009 um, that's a bullhead but um, <clears throat> for now this is going on this one I think it looks great and obviously the black and white works uh, this vintage style just everything about it just works together um, this is a cool watch. Um, not too bad for about two sixty. Uh, I got, and it comes in a day and uh, no date and a date version. But of course, if you choose not to go with the date, um, it's it's cleaner, sure. But you do get that phantom position as you pull the crown out. The, that first position, I guess, that you pull it out would normally set a date. Then you have to pull it out again to actually hack and set the time. Uh, didn't really, I was going to go with that, but I uh, decided that I didn't really want to have that phantom position there because I always know that there should have been a date <laughs> right there in that position, even though I could have just pulled it out really hard and pushed it back really hard as well just to bypass that that position. But yeah, and additionally, I think the way that the date window is executed on here is actually pretty good. Um, it's down by the, I guess, 4.30. Sorry about the focus. But um, I think it's very inconspicuous. There's nothing that really draws your attention to, at least not to my eyes. And um, except when it gets to 31, it does turn, the date is red. Just to remind you to advance the date um, to the appropriate day if you have less than 31 days. Or, you know, 28 in the case of February. Uh, but yeah. Uh, probably going to end up doing a review on this pretty soon because I don't really need to test the and run the you know uh, the times on how accurate this is. I mean, this is a, a mecha quartz movement, um, which means it does have a mechanical aspect to the chronograph portion of it. It's actually mechanical, but uh, the rest of it is quartz, as you can see, it ticks. But it's you know, you've seen these in a lot of micros and uh probably some other Seiko watches and such. Uh, it's a good movement, and uh, it's been pretty accurate so far. It should be. Um, yeah, so I don't have to, like, wait around and see how it's performing. Pretty much straight up, I know. It's just whether, you know, getting a feel for how I like it on the wrist and everything and and all that. Uh, this, just real briefly, this is heavily, uh, I would say, influenced by the Vintage uh, Universal Genève uh, Compact's Nino Rint design, specifically this kind of panda look. Uh, they do have an evil panda version too, which is kind of the reverse panda. And um, some others, uh, great uh, Universal Genève vintage uh, chronographs, but those are so hard to find. And if you can, they are bank. They are super expensive. Um, yeah, they just have shot up and pretty much impossible to get unless you really have the money and the resources to, to find one and, and put down on, on one. So, uh, realistically, this is the closest I'll ever get to one of those classic models. This is fine. I mean, I didn't spend too much on it. It has so much of that good looks. But uh, actually, this one has, like, if you look at the subs, they're actually more along the lines of um, uh, Daytona, Relux Daytona. Which is fine. I don't mind. This, you know, Dan Henry mixes, uh, usually mixes a, a couple or a few different uh, vintage influences into one particular model just to get the core feeling of it. And I think they did it pretty well here. Um, yeah, I, don't, it's, I think it's clean. I, I really like the look of it. 
uh, everything lines up great. Feels quality to me. Um, what I was gonna say is 39 millimeters. Again, I'll do better, more thorough review on this later. Uh, not sapphire, it is, I believe, mineral, but it has nice distortions and I don't mind. I mean, otherwise, I guess what the other vintage thing would be to get uh, acrylic, but that would probably be maybe less, even more prone to scratches, right? But um, I don't know, you, you know, you give and take for the price here. Um, what else can I say about this? Oh, lastly, uh, anyone curious about the loom, all the little dots at the end of the indices, the hands, the hour minute, actually all the hands, even the, the chronograph and the running seconds there, as well as that uh, chronograph seconds that's uh, on standby right there at the tip, you can see there actually is loom in there, but that's probably the weakest application of it throughout the rest. The rest of it's pretty even and, and decent. Uh, I don't expect this to be a loom monster, but at least I do like the fact that they did apply some decent loom that <clears throat> this lasts to some degree good enough for the style. Um, I do wish that the chronograph would have been just, uh, that the second hand would have been matching in uh, the potency of the, the loom and the rest of it, but that's fine. Um, because you rarely get anybody that does, especially um, sub-dial hands to be loomed. Uh, I think that's a, little, a bit of a rare occurrence. And uh, if you look at the, the reference that this was from, the Nina Rint, those hands are loomed too. So I, I like the fact that it, he, he tried to match uh, a lot of the aspects of the uh, Nina Rint. So that's it. Um, I hope you like this. Um, I guess I'll check you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.